Thank you for joining us today. We have a stellar lineup for you as usual. If you have any questions for our panelists during the presentation, you may enter them into the chat or Q&A panels, or if you're feeling brave, use the raise your hand tool and I will modify your control so you can unmute your line and ask it live. Without further ado, here is our MC, Mr. Tom Berkler. Thank you, Lisa. And folks, a couple items today before we kick it off. This is the first day of summer. Um, the great singer Nat King Cole said, roll out those lazy, hazy, daisy, crazy days. I don't have that, do I correct, Lisa? Uh, well, and summer. that's a good thing because we can't afford the copyright, so don't, yeah, don't yeah. be too <laughs> accurate. <laughs> and I can't sing anyway, but we're glad you decided to roll out your summer days with your friends here at CPS. We uh, try to get input from y'all as to what could make the show better. And uh, one thing that we really kind of get with regularity in the request is there needs to be more animals on the show. And uh, so as a result, my son-in-law and daughter who own a Greyhounder with me and the Greyhound, I've insisted on being in the floor here, but uh, I can't show you the Greyhound on camera because you'll see how un how cluttered the rest of the office is. And that would that would ruin the whole theme of the meeting here. You all see we have Abigail with us today, but I'm going to save her to last. Abigail, the anticipation is probably going to become unbearable as the show wears on here. Uh, welcome. Uh, Tom Nichols, good to have you back. We like to kick off with you. You're our regular. Uh, Tom, um, it isn't just unique to life insurance, but it's it's certainly income replacement as well. Um, the uh, the whole question of health. You can't just buy something. They want to, they want to measure up and uh, you're going to discuss a case with us today that actually solved two needs. Um, one is we had a couple high net worth business owners who weren't getting enough coverage under their group DI plan, and they had health issues, and you kind of solved that problem in an economical way for both of them with guaranteed issue personal policies. Uh, tell us about that, Tom. Well, we we partially, you know, did this. Um, well, let, let me start at the beginning and explain kind of how this evolved because I've been participating in a lot of point of sale for advisors who aren't real experienced when it comes to selling disability insurance, which they kind of lean on me to talk to their business owner clients, their individual clients and help them walk through the process and, and make a meaningful recommendation uh, that's going to meet their needs most effectively. And so I had a situation where a health insurance advisor had come to me and he says, Tom, I'm working with this attorney group and uh, they've got group LTD in place, but I don't think it's sufficient for the equity owners in the policy uh, at, the, at the firm. And so he was able to secure a census and a copy of their plan that they currently have. And I want to take and kind of share my screen here real quick, just sure, to show ahead. you what we were uh what we were looking at. And so this is what they call a scatter graph where it kind of shows the whole company. And this is where their LTD plan was, right at an income level of about 220,000. And you can see the administrative staff, the paralegals, everybody down here has 60% of their earnings protected. But here we got a couple of attorneys that are just above that, it's not gonna be detrimental to them, but up here are the equity owners of the firm. And they're earning $800,000 each. And you can see their ages. They're up there in their 50, mid 50s. And uh, one of them is a diabetic. And one of them has a serious back problem that probably wouldn't qualify for traditional disability insurance. But the point is that they didn't know that they could apply for supplemental coverage mm -hmm. through the group and have an individual policy issued on a guaranteed issue basis. So we were able to secure additional coverage for not just the equity owners, but a little, little more coverage here for these attorneys as well. And so I'm going to kind of scroll down here a little bit just to kind of show you what we did. So we were able to take the nine lives right here and get an additional $7,500 of monthly benefit. Now, these are individual policies that we're going to go with them even if they were to change firms or go somewhere else. So the individual policies for the attorneys and we do a carve out for just the highly compensated people who didn't qualify. And so they do have uh, own occupation, but you can see the premium down here is not too shabby, about $1,500 a month. And they were happy to get that additional coverage just on a guaranteed issue basis. That brought them a little bit closer to that 60% threshold. But the 
more important thing is that it was guaranteed issue and they didn't have to go through all the medical underwriting, the financial underwriting. They were able to just issue policies just with a census submission. So they were happy with that. The advisor was happy with that. We were able to split the case and he was like, Tom, just drive the bus for me, make it happen. So I was the one that filled out the applications, did all the heavy lifting for him. And he ended up looking like a hero to his business owner clients to get that additional coverage that they probably otherwise would never be able to get. Tom, you and I were kicking around before the show. What's the minimum number you need in order to get that guarantee issue? We need five lives in order to get guaranteed issue. The larger number of lives, the higher the guaranteed issue amount, of course, but uh, the minimum, it would be five lives in order to get yeah. some GSI. And they'll usually come in at five for $5,000, six for $6,000 and so on. But we were able to get the nine of them covered with the $7,500 yeah, tax-free. Yeah. And just to, just to convince the folks, this is not a contrived illustration you have here. Not that you're known for glossing anything, Tom Nichols, but uh, certainly our heart leap. This is an actual scatter chart here when we saw what we needed up there with regard to the five individuals. So you just never know. You never know what you've got for opportunities there. Yeah, it's a real case. And my, my suggestion would be for those of you that are working uh, with attorneys, with dental offices, with professionals that have group LTD in place, find out what the maximum benefit they'll pay because most of the time the owners are highly compensated, don't realize they're not getting 60% of their earnings. The, the lower compensated people are, but we can do a carve out and secure that additional coverage and put them in the most favorable position. The uh, Tom, explain, and you, you've done this before and I've forgotten, but the 60% limit on the amount of coverage you can have, does having the group in first, does that work for or against you as far as counting toward that 60% max? Well, it, it works better if you have individual coverage. For, you can buy more individual coverage without group than you can with group. So if yeah. you're looking for individual coverage first, you could buy... $25,000 of monthly benefit and then stack group on top of it and take a pay raise if you went on claim. Yeah. So you can get your full max with the personal first. Oh, so, yeah. 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 And as always, Tom, you and uh, Steve are both available to even get on with a client if the agent wants oh, yeah. to discuss what the issues are. Absolutely. Tom, thanks so, thanks so much for uh, being with us today. And let's keep in mind, guarantee issue is not just for life insurance. All right. So... Uh, Seth Trickle. Seth, you haven't been on with us a while here. Um, that's our fault. We owe you an apology, especially in view of the fact that uh, you're kind of on by audience demand. We've gotten a lot of emails asking, where's Seth? And uh, so uh, I hope maybe uh, in their eyes, we're making up for a little lost time here, Seth. So uh, for sure. uh, laying the predicate for what you're going to say, uh, Seth, is everybody and part of the reason you haven't been on is you've just been so busy with regard to the interest rate environment and the activity we're seeing in annuities now. And, and you and Brian and Scott have all been pushing over the shows the past couple months, the what you like to call the annuity rescue program, where people are stuck in, in low interest annuities. T talk to us about that. Tell us what you're doing and, and what you might be recommending for the folks. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. And I have been busy assisting advisors on a day-to-day -day basis with understanding where their opportunities are right now. And this is a slow time, obviously, for all, a lot of us in the industry. You know, a lot of it's tougher to get in front of your clients, potentially. They're on vacations, things like that. And I think this is a good time of the year to go in and reevaluate your existing book of business. So take a look at annuities that you've written over the last decade or so. And in particular, any of the ones that were written about three or four years ago, at least. Um, so if there have been something that was written, you know, three or four years ago, you may potentially think that, okay, well, there's this five or six surrender fee on it. So I can't, I just, from a compliance standpoint, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that, that annuity. So the client's just going to have to hold this product. And uh, really what I want you to take away from this call is that that's actually a great opportunity for you to help this client get in a better position because you know, that annuity that you may have written for them or another rep wrote for them three or four years ago may have sounded like a great deal at the time. Um, but to Tom's point, the rate environment has changed significantly 
uh, since that time. So uh, these products have become a lot more competitive in particular on two fronts, both on the accumulation as well as the income. So when you look at just the accumulation for an index annuity, you know, if cap rates three or four years ago were in the three and 4% range, they're now in the 10 and 12% range. Um, that is a phenomenal uh, strategy to get your client from something where they only had the potential to earn three or 4% and now they can earn up to 10 or 12. Um, so you can put them in a lot better position. And then from the income standpoint, because of interest rates, uh, payout rates have gone up. So if you're in an income uh, oriented annuity, you know, if previously you're only getting four or five, now you might be able to get seven or eight. Um, so those surrender fees may sound like a bad thing in theory, but in reality, uh, even if they eat a little bit of a surrender fee, uh, they are going to be in a much better position to get into that new product to take advantage of the upside potential over the long term. So if there are still a long term investor, which is what an annuity is suitable for, it makes a ton of sense for you to help them replace that existing contract and put the client in a better position. And it's a win win and you the advisor you can get paid again as well for helping them do that. Um, that being said, when you look at annuity replacements, one of the challenges that you face is the, the suitability and the compliance. And so there are different carriers out there. Some of them have their own guidelines and some of them are more strict and some are more lax. And one of them that I wanted to call your attention to today, I'm not going to go too far into the weeds with it, but if you want more information, I'd be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one call with you after this. Uh, the company is Guarantee Income Life and they have a product called the Wealth Choice 10. It's an index annuity. And what it actually has right now is a 5% premium bonus. And what that'll do is, is it can help you alleviate a lot of those surrender fees that may be on the existing annuity. They will accept that business. And another reason I like this carrier is because they have more of a realistic guideline for suitability for annuities. So some carriers have a hard line in the sand saying you cannot put beyond 50% of your net worth into an annuity, your liquid net worth. This carrier doesn't look at it that way. What they look at is, is the sum of the whole. And so really all they're looking for is liquidity. So if somebody has $10 million in the bank, um, some carriers just have a policy, we can't put any more than 50% into that annuity. It's a hard line in the sand. But in reality, somebody that has $5 million in cash sitting in the bank, they, they could totally buy an annuity. This carrier looks at the whole, the whole picture. Um, so they don't have any hard lines in the sand like that. And so even for clients that maybe already own annuities, they can still be great candidates to purchase this annuity that I'm talking about, as well as replace existing ones that they may have on the books. Um, and the reason this product is so attractive, you're getting a 5% bonus on their accumulation product with a 10.75% S&P 500 cap. I mean, you get to keep up to 10.75% of each year's annual return of the market with zero risk to principal and no fee. So if that is something that you want to learn more about, I've been helping a lot of advisors do replacement business this summer in particular. So feel free to reach out to me and Lisa can share my contact information for you. Yeah. And so that's something that you all made aware. You helped me with regard to an annuity I had where I was just looking for a little advice with regard to the distribution, the asset distribution into the various funds. And you alerted me to the fact that while I hadn't got to the end of my premium period, I was out of my surrender charge period. So mm -hmm. I was able to go ahead and convert without incident there. And, and of course, I always like what all of you push. I call it the progressive rescue plan, where even if you're under the surrender charges, take the 10% free withdrawal every year and slowly begin getting it into a better place yes. to go. So yeah, we've seen that, you know, with larger contracts, if someone's in a contract that they bought for 500,000, but if they have a 10% free out, you know, if they're in something that's given them a cap rate of 3%, we can get you 12, like that 50,000, we can put that to work harder for you, right? So it's definitely beneficial to you and the client to make that transaction for sure. Clarify a point for that. What if I haven't done it for the first three years? Can I withdraw 30% or is it a use it or lose it 10%? Uh, yeah, it's a use it or lose it. So yeah. it's not cumulative, but. All right. Uh, it's not to suggest to the crowd that I have a $500,000 annuity or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, thanks so much. We got your name up there. And again, I emphasize that you or Brian or Scott, Scotty are all ready to get on the phone with the client if the agent prefers to talk to them about their annuities. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Abigail, I'm going to use uh, the Corvette that Lisa wants to buy uh, as the example of what you do for a living. Lisa says she wants the Corvette because she, she wants to look better, but all of us on the call agree that she doesn't need much help in that regard. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really keeping things in order beneath 
all of the glitz and the glamour sometime. And that's a good way to describe your job. You keep everything running there and you, you do the kind of thankless job to see that things don't crash and burn after we marketing folks uh, uh, sit out here and uh, give them all the sizzle. Uh, you and I kicked around and I kind of talked to you uh, going into the show yesterday that uh, what's big and, and you, you kind of said you wanted to talk about conversions because they are, they're coming up so much. Uh, when somebody comes to you and says, I want to convert my term product, uh, how, how do you go with that, Abby? What What's the steps? So, uh, thank you. You flattered me before, Tom, that I keep everything going. But um, for conversions, if it's an existing client, then we just check with the carriers, make sure that it's still within its conversion um, eligible period. And if so, we run some illustrations, find what's best fit for the client. But we also want to get the bigger picture. Is the client still insurable? Would another term policy be good for them? Um, or would a different permanent product, but still a permanent product, be good for them if they can still qualify through underwriting? Because the good thing about conversions is there's no medical underwriting. Um, so uh, you get the rate class that your term policy was placed with. The 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 shopping for the for the better product, if even if maybe there's been a little decline in health, Abby, back in the old days, um, you know, basically when you converted, you could go to any any product in the carrier's portfolio. What have you all found over the uh, the last few years as far as what the options are? Yeah, so it's really dependent on the carrier. Um, some carriers like Lincoln allow it in the first seven years of the policy. John Hancock allows it in the first four. So it's real just dependent on the carrier. Um, but where was I going with this? Um, yeah, so it just depends on the product. And if it's if a product in a different carrier is better and maybe standard rates you'll get there, but existing policies at preferred rates, you might still have a better policy with standards. So we, it just all depends. And that's what we do is we look at the full picture. And Abby, you and I were talking too about the fact and we aren't going to mention their names because other carriers do things for us so much better ways. <laughs> but there's some carriers that just have lousy conversion products. Yes. Uh, uh, how much do you use take that into consideration when you're coaching somebody on what term product they might want to buy? we definitely take it into com into consideration. So yeah. even though they might be the lowest price on that term spreadsheet, when you run a term quote, if you're looking at in five years, does this client want to have a permanent coverage and are they going to use this term policy to do it? We might not recommend some of those carriers that are on the cheaper side. Um, and that's not even just for conversions, but also from a service level as well. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned the service in particular, and we have a couple of companies we could mention that are problems there, but you and I aren't going to, because we're, not many people know this, but we're pretty diplomatic. Um, <laughs> the, um, but uh, th there's such a tendency to treat term like a commodity now, and you were expressing your frustration a little bit. And so many times when people go to a spreadsheet that's generated for them, what they're choosing is the lowest price, but it isn't even that much difference. Yeah, um, sometimes it can only be a dollar or so a month. And just yeah. because you see the lowest price, you go with that one. Um, sometimes you have to think that the dollar or even $10 is worth it. I mean, the, we, those numbers are really just random, but the point is the cheapest doesn't always mean it's the best. Yeah. You mentioned for, for good conversion, you mentioned John Hancock and Lincoln earlier. What's available in their permanent portfolio on a conversion? Are they pretty wide open as far as oh. what you can choose? Yes, um, those two carriers, you can choose all of their permanent products that yeah. is subject to product availability at the time of conversion though. Um, so what's available when the term policy goes in force might not be available when you convert. Sure, sure. But right now that would be a consideration as to the type of term you bought if you thought you were gonna convert. What, uh, explain, we, we talked a little bit about this too, Abby. Somebody's maybe five years into their 10-year term mm -hmm. and they realize they bought the term for economy to begin with, but they, they, they recognize they're going to ultimately need a permanent product. What's the kind of give and take with regard to somebody making a decision to maybe convert early before they're to the end of that premium paying period, level premium paying period? Well, the earlier you convert, the better rates you'll get because you'll be younger. Mm -hmm. um, so it, 
as always, we say it's um, better to be insured today than it is to be insured tomorrow kind yeah. of thing um, or next year. A lot of times we see people trying to, to compare rates this year to what it would be at the age they are next year. And yeah. there's a lot of variables with that. And we won't really be able to guarantee what can happen next year. Yeah. But it's just, I, I only bring that up to show that we really try to talk people through as to what all the cons considerations are, that the mm -hmm. debt conversion has a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things about it. You wanted to say a word before you got off about third, third party authorization too. Bring, oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Thanks. Um, yeah. So if you have a client who maybe has a term policy that was written through a different agent, we can still look at that and we can find out the conversion information and we'd be happy to um, help your client and help you with that. All we need is a third party authorization and each carrier has a different process for that. And if you reach out to me, I'd be happy to find out what we need for your client and their specific carrier. And I think that's the key because so many times an agent might even bring in a letter, a good letter, but it might not satisfy the carrier. And I, I know you try to alert them to the fact carriers are under a tremendous amount of liability with regard to giving mm -hmm. out information. So they can save time and trouble if they'll just give Abigail Mulligan a call to begin with and get what they need up front. So yeah, it it's better to just find out what we need before we try to submit something we think might work. Mm -hmm. um, some carriers do accept those letters of authorization and some carriers do not. It comes down to a compliance um, yeah. situation and they they really don't wanna give the information to the wrong people. So I understand. Yeah, and we often think of getting a Tom Nichols or a Seth Trickle on the phone to make the sale. Sometimes the service issues are pretty complicated as well. And I know you have no hesitancy to get on with an agent and his or her client to maybe explain why a carrier appears to be being a little difficult over something too and why something's mm -hmm. needed. So Lisa has put your information up there too. So um, any, any Abigail has points? helped me on a lot of personal cases of my own. So my testimonial <laughs> here today is that she's very quick to respond. She gets me everything I need and I don't have to really worry about that service part of it. She handles it for me. So thank you. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> the, well, you know, I wasn't going to say it earlier, but you you look like a well-serviced insurance holder there, Tom. I, that I am well-serviced, yes. <laughs> some about the... <laughs> Abigail, thank you. Tom, you're in the only area right now that's not getting any rain. So that's why you look so happy over there. The rest of us are kind of getting clobbered. Uh, Lisa, we have anything in the chat box or do you have any closing thoughts here? No, we are clear on the questions, uh, but everyone's contact information was put in there for your convenience, folks. All right. All right. Well, folks, thank you. Have a good first day of summer here. And as always, uh, remember, we're here and we're ready to serve you. Thank you for doing business with CPS.